This video is sponsored by Geek's Toy for Betfair. Clicking the link in the description below gives all users a two week free trial. Okay, so we've introduced you to software. Now I'm gonna show you the ladder interface. I've mentioned it in previous clips, but it's the primary trading window for any pre-race trader on Betfair. Um, en route, we're gonna go through the different menus, show you how to customize it to your own personal needs. Uh, I'll also highlight some of the most important functions um, that are considered to be of, of great use and then we'll finish up by saving a custom profile for a later date. So if we head over to the screen, you'll see we've got the Geek's Toy Market Navigator open already. So for the purpose of this, we're gonna to need to open up a market. We'll do it a little bit further down the line so we've got plenty of time to play around with the ladder interface. So I'm gonna start off, I'll show you all around the screen, um, look at some of the different features and elements that are on offer, um, what they mean, and then we'll go into the settings menu so I can cover all the different points on the list and you'll understand what you need to do if you want to change the interface for your own personal trading um, and, and basically just to fit your setup because everyone's got a different setup. I've got two very large monitors here. I'm not sure that everyone will be in the same position. Um, and yeah, we'll work from there. So looking at the screen, you can see the ladder is open already. Starting on the top left, Market Navigator, we've already got that one nailed. So moving down below, we've got the Market Overview chart. Covered in later clips, um, it's one of the best charts as far as I'm concerned. I like having plenty of space over on the left there. It allows me to give me a bit more foresight of what's actually happening in the bigger picture uh, in terms of the market. Beyond that, we're into territory of the actual ladder. So you can see here there's four different columns and you can set that to be more or less as I'll show you shortly. But each column represents an outcome within the market. So in this particular instance, it's a horse race. I've got the 10 to 8 at Bath. Um, if it was a football match, it would be much the same, tennis match, etc. etc. So starting from the top, we've got the horse's colours, name, as you might expect, the jockey and the trainer. Above that is the staking options covered previously on the market navigator. You can select liability, stake, tick, profit, etc. And you've got the default stake for this particular runner up the top there. So for example, if we change that to 10. Uh, place ten pounds. Nice and simple. Below that, we've got streaming chart. It's not really active at the moment. You just see something blip up there. Um, as bets are matched in the market, they pop up on that streaming chart again, covered in another clip. Below that, we've got staking buttons. Uh, I can show you how to set them up, but it allows you to change your stakes at one click, basically. So that's that. Place a bet into the market, uh, and then below that, we've got the total columns for each of these individual specific. Columns. Now, working from left to right, we've got a very short-term streaming chart mentioned later. Next, we've got the lay money that is available to be backed. So that's the money sat there waiting to be backed. Example, at 3.55, there's £10 lay money sat there. In the centre, we've got decimal odds um, going from low to high. So that's how the, the ladder works up and down. And then to the right there, we've got back money available to be laid. So if somebody jumped in and placed a lay bet at 3.85 at the moment, there'd be £6 on offer. Um, so that's back money available to be laid. And then the next column along would be traded volume. So these are the volumes of money that have been matched and at the price at which they've been matched. So for example, at 3.90, £189 has been matched at this point in time. Uh, further on from that, we've got profit and loss column. That'll activate, in fact, I'll place a... I'll place a £2 bet now, because I'm tight, um, and you'll see that the profit and loss column jumps into life there. So if the trade should move against us, we're in the red, and if it should move for us and the price is shorten, we're in the green. Um, so that's how the profit and loss column works, and it gives you the hedge figures at the specific prices, um, all in one click, as mentioned previously. So purely for example, if I was to click the 20 pence, on the profit and loss column here at 3.45 it's placed a bet in the market there for me which would not only place a closing trade but it would place a hedge trade with it for that 20 pence uh, moving on well that's convenient down the bottom there we've got two different boxes here so we've got our run match bets and our match bets obviously i just placed that two pound at 3.8 so that's showed up there in the match bets and then we've got an unmatched bet at uh, 3.45 for £2.20. So if the price is shortened and hit that bet, we'd hedge up for 20p across the entire market. 
and that's just uh, confirmed there by the amount of uh, stake in with that bet. So we'll leave that for now. Below that, we've got the Betfair chart. The Betfair chart we'll speak about again in another clip, um, but it's just another way of expressing Betfair's information, Betfair's chart within the software, so it's more comparable across all the different selections. So once you understand one column, you understand them all. Um, so that's just exactly the same for each individual runner thereafter. To change the runners, it's quite simple. Just click on the name at the top and you can select the different horse. So moving on, we'll take a look at the settings menu. So if we right click the top of the ladder here, it gives us our second main menu that I've mentioned previously. Um, these are the two main menus that are most important, but the market navigator and the one on the ladder interface. So starting at the top, quite clear, closed market, show grid. Below that, the next section is all very self-explanatory, basically a case of selecting the different runners and you know different races, etc. Below that, we've got uh, we're starting to get into the ladder stuff. So sort, and they're sorting the. This is talking about sorting the selections within the market. So do you want to sort them in terms of how Betfair had them this morning? You see, it just changed all the selections order there. Um, or if you change them, so they're in ascending price, if they've moved. Um, in order from this morning with Betfair or you know you can go further there's other options as well volume and there you go below that you've got central ladders and basically what that's saying is if everything ends up a little bit skew if not quite so clear on the eye you can hit center ladders and it'll bring them all back to the center so they're all nice and comparable in a line uh, there are hotkeys as well you might want to check out the hotkeys section you can do that up on the market navigator over here um, but basically, I'm, I'm fully aware as default, if you hit space and it's turned on, then you can uh, center the ladders like that as well. Below that is in, higher the hedge, uh, hedge the entire market. And so, much like the example on the Betfair website, where it said about greening up across all the runners, you can do that in one click just by hitting the hedge entire market. I'm not going to do it right now because we've got that £2 open and I'll explain some other stuff. Um, further on from that, we've got Auto Center. Again, that's the centering, but it just keeps them there. Probably more use if you're trading in play. Show Traded is obviously the traded volume. That column's now disappeared. You'll notice on the screen. Turn that back on. Uh, next up, we've got Volume Type. So we've got Shading or Bars. If we click Shading, the old way of doing things used to used to be this. Um, now it's a little bit easier on the eye. Um, the traded volume bars is a little bit better to see visually so you can understand what's happening in the market um, so you've got that option there beyond that show what if uh, it's much like the website if we sorry I've just turned it off if we turn it back on and we hover over a price with the mouse you'll see this little figure at the top here changing and that is the what if function much like the website uh, global ordering okay not really going to use it to be honest but if you've got the grid interface open and the ladder interface Global ordering will make sure that the two are in sync. So whatever you do um, on one screen is actually replicated on the other interface. Below that, we've got um, switching markets, all very self-explanatory. Then we've got advanced betting. This is one of the more important tabs, if you like. Um, and basically, what we're all talking about on all of these selections here is the type of betting behavior within the market drag and drop bets, um, hedge bets, etc. So it's basically asking you things like, what order do I do this in? So for example, hedge, drag and drop. So you can hedge, at the, you can either change at the current price or it'll cancel all bets and then place a hedge bet. See, so they're two different actions. So it's basically asking you, how do you want me to do things? Um, cancel prices using single or double click. So for example, if we were to place a back bet here at 5.1, and then place another one on top, we'd have £4 stake, because that's two lots of £2 unmatched bets. Now, if it was one click, and I clicked on this, the whole thing would disappear, but it is set to double click, so it just takes one off. Now, if, if there's, say, several stakes on there, and I double clicked, it would get rid of the whole lot for me. And that is uh, what that is all about on the, on the settings there. So, advanced, what else have we got? Market hedge, they're all very similar, to be honest, a lot of these. Uh, place on double click, submit a second bet or do nothing. Some people double click when they don't mean to. Um, zero net stake, yeah, same sort of stuff. Stake can type custom, yeah. Straight on to the next one then, visual. So round bets make sense. Um, the minimum staking bet on Betfair is two pounds. So what it's saying, I mean, the, the software will place bets of smaller than two pounds for you. 
uh, although it takes a bit longer. So it's saying, do you want me to round all bets up to two pounds so we can submit them faster? And that's selected there. Uh, center ladders that are in play, because when it goes in play, <coughs> scrolling buttons, full state shading, etc. keyboard shortcuts. It's basically these are just extra functions. A lot of the time, you're not going to change most of these. Um, price displayed, standard, hybrid, or complete. So um, when you think about all these numbers you've got on the ladder interface, they're changing all the time. There's money coming in the market, there's money disappearing. Um, if you select standard, then it allows you to see everything refreshing constantly. If you select hybrid, it would update the first three prices continually, um, and, and but the, the other stuff is not updated so quick. Okay, so price display is standard, hybrid, or complete, and basically what that's saying is you can have the choice of uh, the first three selections in the market being shown and updated continually, or you can have the first three being updated continually, the rest being shown but not being updated as fast, or complete, meaning you just see everything. Um, next on from there, we've got on selection change, keep selection stake in. So basically when you change ladders with the different selections, do you want to keep the stakes that you've got on that particular selection? So if we were to swap them two over, you'll see the staking doesn't go with it. If we were to select the other option, then the 25 would move over with that selection. Put them back where they are. Uh, next up, we've got visual options. A lot of these are quite simple to understand, to be honest. Auto center, it obviously offsets your position with the center. Profit or loss, selection profit or hedge profit. Basically, that means do you want the profit on this particular selection to show or do you want the profit to show on the entire market? Bearing in mind, you could have traded two runners at the same time. Uh, last traded amount um, shows in the state column off price. And basically, that is the little flashing white numbers that you're appearing there. Um, and then you've got flash persistence. There's a traffic light system. Um, also, with it flashing up, you can turn that off. Obviously, got that on. Um, below that, you've got the speed at which it flashes. Uh, I'm just trying to think the most important ones here. So, last traded volume bar history, that's a good one. I, in fact, I got them to put this into the software. So, if we select 50 there, that means 50 seconds. And if you watch the traded volumes as I select it, something's changed. So, the light green means the uh, it's traded volume on the entire market and the dark green means it's money that's been traded within however long I just selected it. So in that instance I just selected 50 seconds is however much money has been traded within the last 50 seconds. Uh, if we go back to visual options again, mouse wheel scroll, it's basically the speed, default store, wait a minute, not useful. Um, options for the horse, selection silks, graph options, so we're talking about the streaming chart here on the on the left. Uh, we're talking about widths and just like aesthetic things like that. So it's not too much to worry about. Uh, standard layouts. I'll select a couple of them right at the end of this video. Basically, they're just a couple of pre-formatted uh, layouts that you can use that were put in there by the geek, which is quite helpful. You'll see how some of them vary for different types of situations. Um, Beyond that, you've got, you know, these are like aesthetic things, a lot of it. So header layout, lines, font size, uh, and the same, with, in fact, with the ladder layout. We'll come back to that in a second. Footer layout, you can choose how many bets, whether the Betfair graphs being displayed, number of bets. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Race timer is this little bar along the top. So when the race goes in play, um, there's it's built into the software. So depending on how long the horse race is, it gives you a rough idea of how long's left in this race, which can be useful if you're, you're trading in play. So the one we've got left is the ladder layout. And this is probably, ironically, the uh, the most useful one out of the, the lot in, in terms of submenus. So I can change the number of columns on the ladder. Let's change that to two. So you see that changes there. Um, I can also change the amount of rows. So I could make that too high instead of uh, singular. I'm gonna move that back because obviously that doesn't look very good. Four. So we've got our layout back again. Um, below that, we've got bet displays. Where do I want it to be displayed? I want it to be displayed in the price column in the center. However, you can have it displayed in alternate columns. Um, profit and loss in its own column, because otherwise I think it just gets a little bit muddled and confusing, but you could put that in the, in the center column. Uh, font sizes, again, margins, either side with, with the boxes. Uh, estimated Q position, that is a function that some people like to play around with. It's not one that I use um, purely because it's not 100% accurate 
The reason for that is the way that Betfair send the data to the software vendor, um, and so they don't show bets that are withdrawn from the market. So it's not necessarily accurate all the time. Although it's worth you know it's worth having a little look and understanding how it works. Stake buttons I mentioned at the beginning. A lot of people seem to get lost with these, but you can select top, bottom, or turn them off. Um, font sizes, streaming charts. We'll cover in a separate video, um, and then again more cell spacing. So to be honest, I think we've uh, we've worn that one out to death. But that is the ladder interface. Um, there are several benefits through using the ladder interface. Um, should be quite clear by now. Um, the main things that are of most importance to me and most interesting would be the volume bars, particularly the fact where you can make it two shades, um, the streaming charts, customizability for this. In fact, that reminds me. Let's have a quick look at the. Uh, the custom layouts that were already pre-programmed by the geek. So primarily the geek used to try a little bit of trading in play um, back in the day. So if we select that, you can see the interface is completely different. So that would be more useful for somebody who's trying to play trade in play because they can see the full market depth, what's actually happening um, when the prices are bouncing around and being really erratic. Um, whereas if we go back to mine, for example, which we can do by loading a profile over here, which while we're at it, I may as well mention, um, you can, so once you've set your profile how you want, you can save the custom profile and then just input it there. Uh, I'm gonna load my pre-raised profile there for the time being. But you can see how that's more beneficial to a slightly slower moving pre-race, more information on offer, more charts are needed, um, et cetera, et cetera. So the customization is, you know, the number one thing that's probably makes it more useful in a, in a lot of ways, the fact that you can compare all the different stuff that's available on screen um, and, and obviously things like the market overview chart as well. But that is the ladder worn out to death. Um, I think there's only one thing left to do there. I'll hedge up for the 31p loss and you see it's placed a bet for me straight away. No faffing about, nothing to calculate and it's hedged it up across the entire field um, without having to worry about it, giving me a speed advantage. But that's the ladder interface. Next, we're going to take a look at those streaming charts and move on to all the charting options that are available.